Hello. Uh, today in this uh, series uh, of uh, lectures, presentations on uh, the new metropolitan discipline, we are going to have a look at the uh, metropolitan governance, at metropolitan governance. As we have mentioned uh, in s some of the previous ones, managing a metropolis is like playing chess on a three-leg stool. And we are going to see at the three-leg stool, which is the governance and the playing, the strategic governance, and then the playing chess is the structural governance. We are going to have a look at both of them. The, uh, the stool is like the uh, genoma of the metropolis, where you remember you have the uh, social and the economic uh, sectors, components of the uh, metropolis that antagonize, and you have to manage both of them. The uh, uh, environmental component, which is both urban and natural environment, that can help to manage that dichotomy between the, uh, the economy and the uh, social, and then the governance, uh, the blue one, that has to uh, find the equilibrium. That's why the, uh, the uh, three-leg uh, three stool has these three legs, social, economic, and environment, and is the government that has to uh, create the the uh, equilibrium between the three legs and has to hold these three legs together. If uh, one of the legs, you don't have one of the legs, this stool will obviously fall. So really it is a, 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 the management of this equilibrium which is the, what the governance is about. We saw that uh, specific diagram of the components uh, in previous uh, presentations and we even went into the details of the, of the elements that uh, are within those components. The governance is the dialogue between the private uh, and the public sector. And uh, the public sector has different tiers, has, has different branches of power. And that dialogue we have seen has the, 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 the difficulty and the need for an attitude uh, of, uh, of uh, the, this dialogue. The main problem of the tiers is that metropolis can either be uh, like national uh, uh, governments, uh, national settings, more than urban settings, it can have three types of uh, metropolitan government. It can be confederate, it can be unitary, it can be federal. The confederate is the aggregation of units that keep the sovereignty, so the metropolis there is not very strong, it's more the municipalities that, that make decisions, and if there is a need for a metropolitan decision that doesn't fit some of the um, units of the municipalities, they can get away and then the metropolis doesn't work. So really, metropolis need either a federal uh, situation or a unitary decentralized delegated. So the mi ministries in the center of the uh, unitary uh, system of the country, political system, the ministries can have, the, the president can have a delegation, like in France in the departement, uh, there is the préfet uh, appointed by the, by the president and they coordinate uh, the different aspects, the different ministries, the different investments in the metropolis. That can work as well as if that uh, person, that préfet, instead of being appointed by the president, is, is elected by the population and then represents the population. But that second uh, uh, approach, which is more of a federal system, has the difficulty of the metropolises that are too important in a, in a, in a nation to allow for, uh, uh, to have too much power. You know? And uh, the, the metropolises have already an extremely important economic power. Um, we have seen in a previous presentation that Tokyo will be the 14th nation of the world, Los Angeles, New York, 15th, uh, uh, 16th, London, Paris, uh, 19th, 20th, and so on and so on. So metropolises are extremely powerful, and probably in the future we will have um, more significant decisions made at metropolitan level than at uh, national level. So, uh, by as a joke, we present the possibility of having a United Nations that will incorporate metropolises because they are really the main aspects um, and, and, and wealth-building areas of the world. Already, the metropolis produce 66% of the GDP of the world, and we have seen that in previous lectures, so I, I'm not going to go in, too much into that. The problem of the power of metropolises is, is they have the economic power, that, that is undeniable, but the political power is a problem if that nation only has one metropolis and that metropolis is 
around 60% of the GDP of that nation. The president does not want to have that metropolis with political power because the, the representative elected by the population of that metropolis, if it controls 60 or 70%, like Manila, Cairo, uh, Buenos Aires, of the nation GDP, really it can confront politically the president, so a president doesn't want to provide a setting where that power can take place. No? You have other nations with uh, when the main metropolis are 30 percent of the of the uh, GDP of the nation. Paris, London, uh, Madrid, Barcelona are in that kind of range, and and there you can have that possibility of a delegation and and some kind of representation. And then the the uh, uh, countries where the main metropolis is only five percent of the GDP, and then it's easier for those uh, political unitary powers to have those metropolis with a unitary government because they don't do not uh, jeopardize or confront the, uh, the, the power of the, of the uh, national president. And that is the case of China, that's the case of Germany, which has already federalization of metropolis. Bremen, Hamburg and Berlin have already a state power, no? and uh, uh, Italy. And that is the possible future of those uh, setting of the metropolis. You have the confederate approach that you have uh, several uh, aspects. You have a round table when you get all the uh, mayors together, they share their uh, projects. You copy the projects of others. You do those projects together and then you create an agency to, to run and to manage those projects. That is the confederate approach to the metropolis. And, and many multilaterals which are uh, built up the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Asian Development Bank, and so on, are created out of a compound of nations. They are promoting that kind of approach. But that has a limit, and beyond that limit, you either have the delegated uh, unitary approach, which is the, the French préfet, or you have the, the, the federal approach where this uh, delegated uh, is, is elected by the population. And uh, to prove that when the mo those metropolis have m uh, most efficiency is that many times the, uh, the uh, metropolis which is presented as an example around the world is Singapore and uh, that works very well as a metropolis. Why so? Because it has the power of a nation so they are able to uh, to put the budget, uh, to, to put the taxes, to have a comprehensive approach to the management of, of the metropolis that in, in a confederate approach or in other types of approach you cannot have. So the, the best metropolis are the ones who are able to, to understand the globality of the needs and to have a comprehensive approach. But governance is just part of the game. No? Uh, when your project is to, to, to hang uh, a painting, you really must understand that you need the hardware, you need to hang that painting, which is a project, and then you have the tool, the governance, which can be a hammer, a screwdriver, and you have the project, which is the nail, the screw, or uh, the, the, this, uh, this hung, hanging uh, device. No? Uh, and you must understand that you really need to to link governance to projects, you cannot just design governance because you might end up with, with, you might end up with a nail in one hand, a screwdriver in the other, if you only design governance. And that will be impossible to hang the, the, uh, the picture. So really you must create both together projects and governance. And many of the uh, multilaterals and governments in the last uh, 20 years have realized that when you just make the project and you don't have the tools to implement it, it's a failure. And so now the tendency, the trend, the fashion is to look into governance instead of looking into projects. But you cannot shift that. You have to do both together to make it work. Then once you have, obviously, the, uh, the project and the tool together, you have more sophisticated tools and less sophisticated tools, less sophisticated governance uh, institutions or more sophisticated, and that depends as well on the sophistication of the mechanisms of that country. Uh, we say you have Hollywood uh, films, which are extremely complex with huge budgets, but then you have Bollywood films that are adapted to the culture of that country and the capacity of that country. And you even have Nollywood films in Nigeria, the, uh, the uh, films in Nigeria, uh, the, 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 
the culture of Nigeria filmmaking is called Nollywood films, which are very basic but very good, adapted to the needs of Nigeria. So you can have the same objective, which is hanging the, the, uh, the uh, painting, and you have a screw, but you ha can have different tools depending on the capacity and the development of your uh, institutional setting. And you have to be uh, able to adapt that. Um, and then you have the, uh, the shadow, the, uh, the uh, black, the uncontrolled areas of governance. No? When a government is not able to provide the basic needs of a population, is not provide, cannot provide justice, cannot provide security, cannot provide basic infrastructure, someone else is going to do it. And that's what we call the Peter, uh, the Peter Pan syndrome. No? The fact that Peter Pan could not control his shadow that made him impossible to grow. Peter Pan could not grow, well, was always a child, and part of that was because he could not control the, his shadow. And that happens in many uh, governments, nations around the world. The government is not able to provide basic needs, and then there is this kind of uh, shadow economy, uh, not necessarily criminal, but uh, tries to find its way around. And so incorporating that shadow economy uh, 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 is, is necessary. But uh, what we must realize that if you put governance first, if you only look at governance and you don't look at the project, you might end up with so many alternatives of governance and you may uh, end up with a pizza cutter, but what you really need is to, to screw a screw into, into, into the wall. So we really must look at both things together. Or you can end up designing that a stool with three legs the other way around. So it might be a beautiful piece of furniture, but it's not playing the role it has to play, and you must not get things uh, uh, top down. Thank you very much. Uh, you can download these uh, slides from the links uh, in this page, and next time we are going to look at the Metro Finance. Thank you very much.